Good evening. Welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. My name is Nick. I'm the lucky one tonight. <laughs> I get to facilitate. Um, we do have a new face on the panel. So let's go to get some introductions, and uh, they'll introduce themselves and also talk about what they do for, for the ministry. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dominic Gomez, and here at POPF, I help out with running the sound for our live services as well as our live stream. Hi, my name is uh, Rudy Rolls. I'm one of the ushers here at Power Praise Fellowship, uh, one of the youth uh, leaders here. Uh, I've been attending the Power Praise for about a little bit over two and a half years. Uh, I think I've been an usher about a little bit over than a year, and it's about to be my third month as a youth leader. Awesome. Good stuff. Good to have you on board. Um, so before we start the study, um, we're going to do an icebreaker, okay? I love, um, I love putting the panel, I guess, a little bit on the spot. Because everyone's so willing, such a good Christian, right? So, good Christian group. Yeah. Um, so, it's gonna be a "Would you rather" question, okay? And uh, we'll start with you on this one, Rudy. Um, so, would you rather live without internet or live without any air conditioning or heating? That one, that was an easy one for me. I would say without the internet, because I growing up, I man, there was times where. <laughs> We <laughs> I wanted well, yours I different. Okay, okay. Well, with mine, the reason I would say that is because uh, I, growing up, I know there was time. Me and my brother lived in the same room, right? So all our lives, we didn't really have AC that was going into our room. So <laughs> it was a bunch of body sweat, just mm. sweating off each other in the winter. It's cold. We got those uh, those Mexican Peter. blankets with the big old tiger on. <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that came in clutch. Everybody got those. It came in clutch. The one that came, we got <laughs> from the flea market for 20 oh, bucks yeah. for a queen size. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, my yeah. mom was like, if, you, if you're going to wear it, or not wear it, you're going to put it on, I'm going to wash it. You better use it. And I was like, yeah, we use that thing all the time. But <laughs> anyways, besides that, I will say I think at that time, I didn't really think of Internet as a big demand the way it is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ma demand for it now, of course, they use it for, you know, educational and all that stuff. But yeah. I remember growing up, the only time we use the Internet is either just for school I remember being at the house, either using books or anything that, that deals with school. So I think the whole AC and mm -hmm. like heating that has, I don't know. Without it, there was tough times. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I thank God for it. I was like, man, because the place we're in right now, oh, man. Yeah. It's a little, a little hard on the on the heating part, but not the heating, the AC. But we put the window, the big AC unit. Oh, yeah. man, it's like a cold breeze in there. It <laughs> works. Cool. I wasn't expecting that, but that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Dom. Yeah, I was like <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Rudy. I, I got to have the AC and the heater. I got to have it. I I don't like being cold. I don't like being hot. I got to have that perfect temperature. I got to have it to where I'm comfortable. Internet, I'll go to Starbucks. I'll go to the library. I did that when I was in school. Um, we didn't have internet at our house or it was limited, and yeah, so IHOP. went to the library, did it there. IHOP. I remember being like five or six years old, and my dad spent like $300 on a full encyclopedia set for us to use, so I think I can make it without internet. Okay, well, for me, wow, I feel kind of bad now, but um, <laughs> I would definitely get keep the internet, okay? <laughs> I mean, uh, Chancho Drip wouldn't be here. Surprise, surprise. That's a plug right there, but um, no, just for... Uh, I don't know, with technology being the way it is, I'm sure they can, they're going to come out something like you can put on and it just cools your body instantly, right? So I'm looking for the future. So I definitely <laughs> couldn't be without the internet. My question is, for how long? I was thinking like a month or something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I guess no. that's a bigger question. Is how long do I got to live without the internet? Forever. Oh, forever. okay, then uh, internet. <laughs> <laughs> so I just put a blanket and a uh, bunch of clothes on. <laughs> There's yeah, only so, so much you can take off, though. Yeah, and we're about to get true. these triple digit heats here pretty that's soon. That's true. Here in I'm already Houston. feeling it. Well, cool. I that's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. So now that we got that settled, okay? Yes. We can continue with tonight's study. So uh, the theme for March is fishing for a miracle, okay? And the, the scripture is what is it coming out, Dom? Our scripture Dumb for me? the month of March is coming out of Matthew 17, verses 27. And uh, do you want me to read that? Yes, yeah, so if you could, please. Sure. I'm reading out of the King James Version, and it reads. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook, and take up the fish that cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Take that and give unto them for me and thee. So for the title of today's study, it's, it's going to be um, anticipating your miracle, okay? So anticipating can also be defined as as expecting or or awaiting, okay? So Tonight, we're going to discuss the actions and steps 
necessary to receive your miracle, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, if my wife, or for some of you, if you're a ruka, was to ask you, you know, what do you want for dinner? And my reply, and I reply with, you know, whatever is fine. Mm -hmm. um, but deep down inside, I want a ribeye mm -hmm. with a loaded baked potato, mm -hmm. no sour cream or chives, mm -hmm. and a side of corn with butter and uh, some chili powder, as well as some lemon pepper, right? You better I stop right there. Man, I'm Good preaching March. already. Yep, I'm preaching March. already. <laughs> How can I be disappointed when I get chili dogs and chips for dinner, right? So a few things to consider here. One is the want and desire has to be known. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. wife has to be aware, especially if she's asking, right? Well, on top of that, if you call me Ruka, you ain't getting a ribeye. <laughs> You're getting a chili. That dog. was for the people that are watching <laughs> that don't have wife. Maybe they have Ruka okay, or something, right? Okay. So that's one. Number two is I got to do my part to ensure this mm -hmm. happens, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if it means going to the store to buy those ribeyes mm -hmm. or picking up the kids from school so that way she has time to cook, yep. then I do what I got to do, even yeah. if it means clean the kitchen before, right? Right. Um, in prepare. three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> prepare. <laughs> prepare, exactly. <laughs> in three. I like how you said that. You best believe I'm going to be prepared for that ribeye. Um, I'm going to make sure we have our steak knives ready. Mm -hmm. And we have our A1 steak sauce ready A1. to go. Mm -hmm. We don't do that Heinz 57, right? No, Heinz 57. The same is with God, though, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't just sit back and hope for a miracle. No. We got to speak it into existence, right? Mm -hmm. And we live like we're prepared to receive it. Mm -hmm. We have to put action behind our hopes mm -hmm. and behind Amen. our dreams, right? Yeah. So that the first action we're going to talk about today or right now is um, is to eliminate hindrances, mm -hmm. okay? So um, I would like both of you to name, name one hindrance that could potentially block blessings from God. So Dom, just name, just name it. What it one. Oh, gosh. Um, the first one that comes to mind is bitterness. Bitterness. Yeah. Okay. Mine's a little bit similar. I'm going to have to go with the uh, grudges. Grudges. Yeah, cool. Grudges. All right, I'm going to say jealousies, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, let's go ahead and, uh, Rudy, if you can expand on yours a little bit. You said grudges. Expand yeah. on that just a little bit. Yeah, so to me, and it could be it could be anybody with, like, friends, family, uh, anybody you know. Yeah. But uh, I know growing up, I know I had some grudges against certain people, but I notice when, when you have those grudges, you're like, it's like a, having like a hold that's like kind of blocking mm -hmm. you from God's blessings, right? right. Yeah, the, way, sure. the, the way I think of it is like, because uh, it reminded me of a one time pastor was preaching, uh, and it was on uh, Ephesians 4.32, be kind to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God Christ forgave you. Mm -hmm. So what that, what I'm trying to point out is uh, when you haven't fully given yourself to Christ, you haven't fully forgave others as well. Right. Because mm -hmm. Christ forgave you. If you're not going to forgive others, then what? Well, it contradicts the word, exactly. so yeah. you're not let, you're not allowing you're like putting a rubber band on a water hose, like right. you're you're choking your blessing. So I feel like you wouldn't feel the, uh, you know, taken. Yeah, well, for sure. That that's Absolutely. good stuff. What about you? You mentioned what would you say? I said bitterness. So but grudges, funny. bitterness. Okay, go ahead. It's funny that Rudy brought up bitterness, and then in his ex ex ugh, explanation, he said unforgiveness because that's actually the first one I wrote down. Mm. Because I had written, you know, two just in case. Um, but bitterness, you know, I wrote down bitterness because um, we can, some people don't even know what bitterness is or how it can take root in our spirits. And we can go years and years and years hanging on to bitterness and be completely ignorant of it. Um, um, I know that for years I did. I held on to so much bitterness. Bitterness about um, my past, bitterness about people who are came in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we hold on to that bitterness, what we're doing is we're, we're choking God's ability to bless us. Like you said, it's kind of mm -hmm. like putting that, trying to, you know, put a rubber band around a water hose. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work. And so oftentimes God uses those hard parts of our lives, those parts that cause the bitterness to bless us and to, you, to help us lead others to him by sharing our story. If we don't talk about our story in a way that glorifies God, mm -hmm. and instead we're just talking about our story in a way that shows the bitterness and resentment and the hate that we have, we're not al allowing God to heal those parts of us. And, you know, God takes the parts of us that would otherwise disqualify us from receiving the miracle and says, that's exactly why I'm giving you the miracle. Because mm -hmm. I've seen how you've come through these things 
without the bitterness or you've let the bitterness go. So I think bitterness is a huge is a huge hindrance. It's or very can nice. Be. Very nice. So we uh, we heard grudges, bitterness, I said jealousies and it's crazy because these things can impact you when you're in church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It can cause you I've seen people to where um, jealousy was an issue to where they were bothered because somebody's saying a certain way. They didn't like the way they sang mm-hmm. when in, or they didn't like the way they played, right? Things like that. And it's crazy because that can happen during services. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do is to cause that hindrance, to be a distraction yeah. and to kind of put that block, mm-hmm. kind of put a barrier between you and your blessing, right? right. Mm-hmm. So the next thing, uh, the next action I want to talk about is, is worship, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. Um, Dominique, we'll start with you on this one. When anticipating a miracle, right, mm-hmm. when expecting a miracle, why is worship so crucial? Worship is, is essential to um, when you're anticipating a miracle. And, you know, a lot of the times people take the, the phrase praise and worship as if they're one thing. And I think it's really important to point out that there is a big difference between praise and worship. Mm-hmm. Praise is recognizing God for the amazing things that he does in our lives or the lives of pe- people that we love. Um, praise is a way of giving him thanks, but praise can also be applied to other parts of our lives. We give our kids praise when they do something good f- you know, in school. Yeah. We give um, our employees praise when they meet a, a goal or a deadline. Mm-hmm. We even give our dogs praise when they can successfully go outside and use the bathroom. Mm-hmm. You know, right. Praise is, is recognizing the act. Worship is completely different. Worship goes beyond praise because it, it's not easy. Worship is not easy. Praise is easier to do than worship mm-hmm. because you're praising, some, you're, pra- you're praising because something has happened to you, something positive has happened or mm. has positively impacted you. Worship is crucial when we're anticipating a miracle because we have to give it to him at all times, in all circumstances, not just when he's done something good or is going to do something good in our lives. We don't worship him because we know he's going to bless us with a miracle. We worship him because he is who he is. He is the beginning and the end. He's he's almighty. Um, When we're worshiping God, we realign realign our priorities with his. We become on the same level with him Mm -hmm. and that we're acknowledging that he's (coughs) Lord over every part of our lives. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's why when we're anticipating a miracle, it's important that we worship him, not because we're expecting something, but just because he could do nothing, Amen. and he's still that good. Amen. Yeah, for he's sure, still I, worth I think worship. for for me, I think that uh, worship, true worship to me, is when when nothing's happened yet. When there's mm-hmm. nothing to be really praising God over. Mm-hmm. Worship to me, uh, and I think is um, is something that you do even when everything is not necessarily right. right. When you just got that disconnection notice for your for your internet, right? Oh, yeah. Or for your cable TV or whatever it is, right? It's the little things, yeah. Jimmy. And, <laughs> and we, can't, we can't apply yep. worship to any other part in our lives. We can't worship our dogs. We can't worship our husband. We, c- we can only worship and should only worship Christ, Very good. our God. Amen. So, okay, so Rudy, so can you talk about a time um, where your worship, I guess, brought you through a trial, um, you know, a tough time or a struggle in your life? Yeah, the, the first thing that came to mind was uh, – my uh, car had a blown out head gasket, man. Well, I didn't know at the time, but once I found out, I was like, okay, well, how am I going to get to work? How am I going to mm-hmm. go home or what I got to do, the things I got to do, right? Yep. So for a while, I kind of felt like I was like on a hold or whatnot. So, but during this time, I was, I, I just knew God got me. I know he was going to take care of me. I, I knew it was going to happen. But in the moment, it, it, it didn't feel like that. But I knew that was just, you know, the enemy's trying to reel me in. Mm-hmm. Hey, this, no, God's not really taking care of you, but. Right. He is, but and that's mm-hmm. the thing. I, as long as I kept my focus, um, but when when I come to you know just normal like, well I, I don't feel like any Sunday's normal, right? But once I come in, once uh, everyone, when, once I see brothers and sisters, just just even the parking lot, you know what I mean? Right. Everything just goes away, like, yeah. and that's not even we're not even worshiping it, we're not even praising it, you know what I mean? So just that love, I just being prepared to get the anointing from God, it's just mm-hmm. it, it's something I can't explain. Like our coworkers tell me, like, you always get Sundays off. I was like, of course, because that feeling I get in there, there's nothing else that's going to fulfill that. Yeah. Yeah. So I always make it a mandatory that I have these Sundays off. But when I get on the altar call or when I see brothers and sisters that need prayer, it's not about me. Yeah. It's about it, – all. it's all God's love, you know what I mean? Yeah. So w- when I see that, it just it, – I can't explain it. It's hard to tell people what that is. But 
Right. I try to let them know, hey, get in there. Yeah. <laughs> get here, right? Get, get here. Get, get in there, you know what I mean? So and then that's what really, um, because at that time when I needed my car, I had to go to campus over here um, at DACC. So right after work, I'll take the bus to go. Then after I do my class, take the bus to get back to my house. And either I think, uh, I think my mom was ready to pick me up or someone was ready there. What was cool about that whole process, while I needed like a ride to work, I mean, Thank God for my wife. She took me to work every morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it was a sacrifice on her on her end too. But um, but even when I needed to go home, I had like coworkers, like three to five coworkers that hit me up, like, "Hey, you need a ride? You need a ride?" And mm -hmm. it was like I didn't realize how much love they had for me. So in the process, it showed that God has these people in in place that hey, you're cared for, yeah. you're loved for. Don't matter. There's still a way. I might not know at the beginning of the day, but it was there every mm -hmm. time. And that what really kind of made my mind. I was like. I just praise God for every time I'm up here, and it's it's been good. It's been too good. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's been awesome. too it's good, good, man. Too good. That is awesome. I think um, that's ex that's that's an awesome example of worship there, mm -hmm. because um, things can fall apart. It could be something simple. It could be a flat mm -hmm. tire, but when you you know when you get to church and when you finally get here, it makes it yeah. worth it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that is like awesome. A bunch of weight just blew me off. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. So the last action that we'll discuss tonight is is living as if you already received the miracle, mm -hmm. okay? Why is this important? We'll go back to you, Rhea, on this right. one. Why is this important? So that one kind of got me stuck for a bit, but I was like, I already knew the answer, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So the way I thought of it, you know, back to what I just told you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, day by day, God's already filling up my cup. Maybe mm -hmm. I not realized it yet. Maybe I don't see it the way I want to see it, the best yeah. that I want to see. Mm -hmm. But He's. it's the little things that I started looking at now since I'm getting a little older. I'm 23 now. I didn't really, the things I cared about when I was like 19 to yeah. 18, just, I'm starting to care a lot now, Take right now. So, yep. mm -hmm. But while God is filling that cup, he's giving you miracles at the same time, like mm -hmm. a friendship, love, all that stuff is happening. So we got to claim that victory. I feel like if we, if we don't claim it, then we're not speaking in existence like you said earlier, yes. right? Yes. I feel like why wouldn't we walk like a, like a miracle is happening? Mm -hmm. like, there's, there's too many good things I could list. That's why I feel like that's what just the, his love is what keeps me filling up. It, it, like grudges, all that stuff has gone away because it's done a big part in my life. And then once I realize the truth of it, it it's, I call it a miracle in itself. Instead of walking on eggshells, mm -hmm. I'm walking in faith and n no fear. So it's yes. been a true blessing. Awesome. Mm, awesome. That is good. Um, that's, that's very powerful that you mm -hmm. said that. Dominique, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance right here. What yeah. is, why is this last action so, why is it so challenging? Living as if you've already received the miracle is challenging because it takes discipline and mindfulness. Um, knowing what we can and can't do, mm -hmm. um, I believe that we can actively participate in our un the unfolding of our miracles. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that means that using the term, I don't know what to do, or this is my favorite, wait upon the Lord, <laughs> you know, yes. waiting for my miracle, just wait upon the Lord. Those aren't good enough excuses. Even when we don't know what to do, it doesn't mean we can just slide by with doing nothing. Mm -hmm. um, gratitude. First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians um, 5.18, God tells us, he's, he's calling us to be a grateful people. Mm -hmm. And he's telling us that if you don't, if you don't um, cry out to me and thank me, the rocks will do it. We have to be grateful in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the big question is, can we be grateful in all circumstances? When we don't get that miracle right when we thought we were going to get it, when we, um, when we thought that the breakthrough was going to come, but it didn't come exactly how we thought, you know, can we be grateful for little tiny things like the birds chirping or this wind that we know is, is you know, <laughs> driving us crazy, but it's spreading seeds so that mm -hmm. flowers can start to bloom. The warmer weather, can we be, 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 be thankful for that triple-digit weather that's right around the corner? Oh, yeah. And on top of that, <laughs> can we be thankful for the person working at the electric company raising our bill to <laughs> double <laughs> and triple prices because we're running the AC nonstop, <laughs> right. you know, yeah, yeah. for the summer? Can we be thankful for those things, you know? Give, we have to give God thanks for miracles in other people's lives as well. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is the hardest part, is when you're, mm -hmm. is, is when you're waiting for a miracle and that miracle comes to fruition in, in somebody else's life. Can we give thanks to God for them, for their miracle while we're waiting for ours? Mm. Um, 
I want to read a scripture really quickly. Yeah. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 says, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. When we fill other people's cups, ours gets filled. God calls us to love others. And we have to be steadfast in knowing if he is, is promises the miracle and all of the blessings that the Bible says that we're entitled to as his children, they're going to come. But our timing is not God's timing. Mm -hmm. His ways are, are different than our ways. And we're not called to understand them. Yeah. We're call, just called to obey. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think a lot of it starts with um, our speech, mm -hmm. like what we claim, right? Mm -hmm. What we what we say. We talk, I talked about earlier speaking speaking it to existence. At the same time, are you a negative person? Are you constantly, are you constantly praying that you know God uh, help you know unify your family, your your husband, your wife, your son, daughter? But then on the on the other hand, are you constantly talking down to them? You're right. Mm -hmm. So whatever you say, that's it has a lot of you have a lot of power in your tongue. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, this has been really good. You want to add anything else to this, or we good? No, just I just want to tell anyone out there who's listening, just just hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. You know, 2020, 2020 was a tough year, yeah. And there were so many things in twenty twenty that didn't happen that maybe people thought should have happened or hoped would happen. But twenty twenty is brand new. Twenty twenty one is brand new, and God's ways are new every morning. Just continue to praise Him, continue to worship Him, continue to stay focused on Him, and He's gonna. We're going to see a lot of miracles come through in 2021. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So Amen. in closing, um, don't allow yourself to become stagnant in God. Um, visions, prophecies, and miracles are important, right? But your salvation and connection to God is priority, mm -hmm. okay? So um, at this time, I want to thank the panel for joining me tonight. I thought this was an awesome study, awesome Thanks discussion. Thanks for having me. You'll, yes, be, for back. Sure. You'll <laughs> be back. You'll be back. You'll be back. I think we like him. <laughs> I think we like him. We'll yeah, we back. do like him. We do like him. So uh, you now have the opportunity to give. Yes. On your screen, you will see that text to give number. Don, what's that text to give number? That text to give number is 575-223-1630. Did awesome. I get that right? Yes, you did. I did. Good stuff, good stuff. You can also give uh, on our website, powerpraisefellowship.org. Um, as far as announcements, any anything for you, Thruity? Anything going on? Uh, yes, we do got uh, one event coming uh, end of the month on the 27th of March. It's going to be just a little recreational day with the youth. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I believe, volleyball and basketball. Nice. Uh, food, drinks, all that stuff is going to be included. And But yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, get with me at church. Uh, we'll give you more details on the timings and stuff like that. I want to come for the food. You had me at food. I know, <laughs> I know what they're about. having. Really? What are they having? Nacho bar. Nacho bar? Nacho bar. God. Were you supposed to share that? or? Well, I shared it. Yeah. Nacho bar. So if you don't come for the volleyball <laughs> and the basketball, come for the food. Definitely. So don't forget to join us for church on Sunday, 1045. All right. Um, as always, the registration link will be on the church Facebook post. It's also available on the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we got to register. Um, especially if we're doing in-person in attendance, okay? Um, live stream starts at 1045 as well. So if you can't be here in person, watch the live stream. You don't got to register yeah. for that, so don't worry about that stuff. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us. You guys have a great rest of the week. We will see you guys on Sunday. God bless. Good night.